What's up travel friends? It's Stoof here from Travel Season. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're going to talk about some exciting things we did in Grand Teton National Park in the surrounding area in summer of 2021. Hopefully this can help you prepare for your own trip to the Tetons. Grand Teton National Park is located in northwestern Wyoming in the United States. This park is pretty large. It takes over an hour to drive from the south end up to the north end. This is a longer park from north to south. The north section of the park, if you keep heading north on that road, you'll head up to Yellowstone National Park. If you're in the national park heading south, you're heading towards Jackson, Wyoming. Day one of this itinerary is our most strenuous day with the most physical activity. We're going to start the day off with a hike from the Lupin Meadows area. There are a number of hikes that leave from this trailhead. You could try hiking to Bradley Lake. That would be a moderate hike, about six miles round trip. You could hike to Bradley and Taggart Lakes. That would be about 1600 feet elevation change and a little over 10 miles round trip. Still considered a moderate hike compared to the others. You could hike to Delta Lake, that's becoming a more popular hike. This would be seven miles round trip and much more elevation gain, or you could do the hike that I chose to do, which was Surprise and Amphitheater Lakes. This was over 10 miles round trip and over 3000 feet elevation gain. This is a really fun hike with some beautiful views of the Alpine lakes. However, it is a very strenuous hike, so I don't recommend this one if you are not acclimated to the elevation here yet, or if you are new to hiking. I am an avid hiker, but we weren't totally acclimated and I was getting lightheaded by the time we got up to the top of the, near these lakes. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you're prepared for the hike if you choose to do one of these beautiful hikes in Grand Teton National Park. Hiking to Surprise and Amphitheater Lakes will take you anywhere between five and seven hours to do, so you might want to get there early. It can also be challenging to find a parking spot at the Lupin Meadows Trailhead because so many trails leave from this area. This parking lot fills up quickly, so you want to make sure you get there early in the morning so you have a parking spot and you can begin your hike. After finishing up your day hike from the Lupin Meadows Trailhead, you can head back the way you came and then head north and then turn left into Jenny Lake parking lot. Jenny Lake parking lot also gets full pretty early in the morning. You might get lucky and some people might be heading out after lunch or you might have to park on the main road. Uh, you'll see a big line of cars along the road and you might have to walk a bit to get to the Jenny Lake area. Once you're in Jenny Lake area, you can stop at the visitor center. There are some nice bathroom facilities there. You can pack your own picnic and have a nice little lunch with beautiful views of the Tetons and the lake right in front of you with the reflection of the mountains on the water. It's a very peaceful lake. You can also take a boat ride across Jenny Lake. Currently reservations are not accepted. You need to purchase your boat pass. When you get there, the boat leaves every 10 to 15 minutes and it's $18 for a round trip pass. If you don't feel like taking a boat ride and you still have energy to do more hiking, you could hike around Jenny Lake over to Hidden Falls. It's about four miles out and back and you'll get some beautiful views of the lake as you're hiking along there, some views of the forest and a chance to see more wildlife. After heading back from Hidden Falls and making it back to the parking area in Jenny Lake, you can head south and now it's time for some delicious dinner at Dornan's Pizza. This is located closer to the main visitor center of Grand Teton National Park, uh, just across the Snake River. Dornan's Pizza is delicious. They have some great beers on tap. The moose bread is highly recommended. And while you're sitting there, you can have outdoor seating or indoor seating. If you choose to do outdoor seating, there's an upstairs outdoor dining area with beautiful views of the Tetons as you're eating your delicious pizza. Day two of our itinerary in Grand Teton National Park is a little more laid back when it comes to physical activity, but there still is a lot to do, lots of sights to see. 
You're going to start by heading to Schwabacher Landing for sunrise. That is the best time to go in my opinion because the sun rises in the east and just illuminates those Grand Teton Mountains so beautifully in the morning. Schwabacher Landing is an area that has been dammed by beavers off of the Snake River and the water is really calm right there. So sometimes when it's not windy, you'll get some beautiful reflections of the mountains on the water and it's extra beautiful when the mountains are golden from the sunlight touching them in the early morning. There's a short one or two mile walk from the trailhead area at Schwabacher Landing. You can explore around the water body there and there are gorgeous viewpoints no matter where you look. So I highly recommend getting out of your vehicle and walking at least a half mile to get better views of the water in the mountains. It's one of my favorite spots in the park. Once you're done at Schwabacher Landing, you're going to head back in your vehicle and go up north to the Snake River Overlook. This is another magnificent overlook. I actually made a painting from this one in 2019. This is another one of my favorite viewpoints in the park. The Snake River is winding in front of you and in the far background you see Grand Teton and the other mountains right there. It's a beautiful spot and you don't have to walk very far. This is an accessible area from the parking lot. It's all paved so it's a nice easy quick stop with a beautiful view. The next stop on our itinerary is Oxbow Bend. Oxbow Bend is another pull-off area where you just pull off and you can walk you know between 10 and 50 feet from your car to see a gorgeous view of the mountains again. Oxbow Bend is a great spot to view wildlife. This is a wetland environment, so you could also see moose here. You could see a lot of different species of water birds. We saw otters here one time. There's a lot of different animals you can see here, including fish in the water. After Oxbow Bend, our next stop is the Jackson Lake Dam. This is the dam that controls the water flow out of Jackson Lake. The water level was incredibly low at Jackson Lake when we visited in the summer of 2021 because the lake water was being used to support farmers in Idaho. That was really interesting to see. The water level was really, really low, uh, but the dam was still going and it was still pumping out water at the end of August when we were visiting this national park. Seeing the dam up close in person is a pretty cool thing to see. There's a little bit more information about the construction of this dam and the history in a link in the description under this video. After visiting the Jackson Dam, the next stopping point for our itinerary today is the Signal Mountain Lodge. This is where I recommend you stop and grab some lunch. There are a few options for eating at the Signal Mountain Lodge. There's a restaurant that during 2021 only had takeout due to COVID, and then there is a bar grab a drink to go and sit outside at a bar type seating environment with beautiful views of the Tetons. After grabbing lunch at the Signal Mountain Lodge, maybe browsing around the shops or walking around the grounds there for a little bit, head south to String Lake. String Lake is a shallow lake just north of Jenny Lake. If you'd like to go swimming during your time in the Tetons, String Lake is your best option for swimming because this lake is more shallow than the other lakes. Therefore, it's not as cold as the other lakes. Uh, it's still very cold, don't get me wrong. The water is very cold, but it is not as cold as the other lakes. String Lake is one of our favorite spots in the park to just take your camp chairs, set them down on a little beachy area along the shore of String Lake, and just relax. If you have kids, this is a great spot to go swimming as well because the water's so shallow. It's not quite as dangerous as some of the other lakes. There are a lot of dead, broken tree branches in the lake, so just be careful with that with kids. Uh, but the water is so clear, you can see them when you're in the lake. You also can go kayaking on String Lake. There are a handful of places where you can rent kayaks in Grand Teton National Park area. Or you're welcome to bring your own kayak, you just need to make sure that you have all the proper permits to be kayaking in Grand Teton National Park. For our kayaking experience, we took the kayak around String Lake, which was incredibly peaceful and beautiful, and then we walked a little bit over to Lee Lake, where we continued our kayaking experience onto Lee Lake. 
I have more information about renting kayaks in the description under this video. So that crammed a lot into just two days in Grand Teton National Park. You could spend an entire summer here and not do everything. There are so many things to do in this park. But if you happen to have three days in Grand Teton National Park, if you hadn't had the chance yet, I recommend visiting the town of Jackson, Wyoming. This is a beautiful, pristine little town just south of Grand Teton National Park. It has a handful of fantastic restaurants and lodging options. Staying in Jackson is gonna be a little bit more expensive than staying somewhere else, uh, especially if you're gonna stay in like a campground somewhere in the national park. Jackson's definitely gonna be more expensive than that. There are some great breweries and fine dining restaurants. If you have a pet with you, Grand Teton National Park is not a very pet friendly park. You're not allowed to take dogs anywhere off of paved pathways, like a paved walkway along the main road. The Bridger Teton National Forest is very close to Grand Teton National Park and pets are allowed on a leash in that national forest land. We had our dog Zedge with us on our trip, so we wanted to give him some exercise as well. So we did a hike with him in the Bridger Teton National Forest and he had a great time hiking along the trail and swimming in the water and watching the pika and the ground squirrels. <laughs> There are other great hikes you can do in Grand Teton National Park. I made another video about visiting the Tetons back in 2019. I have a link for that video in the description under this video if you are interested in finding more options for things to do when you're in the Tetons. Also, if you happen to have time, a couple other great spots to visit are the northern section of the park along Jackson Lake. There's Coulter Bay Village. There's a marina there. There's a campground there. That's where we stayed the last time we visited the Tetons. I will say there is no cell phone service at the campground in Coulter Bay Village. All right, guys, that wraps up this video for today. I hope you enjoyed this one and it gave you some helpful tips for visiting Grand Teton National Park. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of our fun travel adventures. If you have any questions about this video or things to do in the park, you can leave a comment under this video and I will get back to you to the best of my knowledge. Have a great day and happy travels.